Hi everyone, my name is Ali DeBoost and I am a pharmacist here at North Kansas City Hospital. Today I will be talking to you about the part four of the healthy changes for your heart series, specifically medications. Before we deep dive into the medications, let's just do a quick refresher and kind of knowing your numbers. So overall, when you get a lipid panel from your physician, it's going to be further broken down into your total cholesterol, your LDL, HDL, and triglycerides. So your LDL is the bad cholesterol and your HDL is good cholesterol. So essentially what that means is that your LDL is what can cause the plaque buildup that we're concerned about. And your HDL is kind of a scavenger that will try to get rid of the H the LDL. Now what do these numbers actually look like? So your total cholesterol you want between 125 to 200, your LDL less than 100, for your HDL men you want it greater than 40 and women greater than 50. In triglycerides you want less than 150. So what affects my cholesterol? So there are a variety of things that can affect your cholesterol, specifically some that are modifiable versus non-modifiable. So your diet, specifically saturated fat and cholesterol heavy foods that you eat make your blood cholesterol level rise. So saturated fat is the main problem, but cholesterol in foods also matters. So reducing the amount of saturated fat in your diet helps lower your blood cholesterol level. Foods that have high levels of saturated fats include some meat, dairy products, chocolate, baked goods, and deep fried and processed foods. Weight. So being overweight is a risk factor for heart disease. It also tends to increase your cholesterol, so losing weight can help lower your LDL, that bad cholesterol, total cholesterol, and even triglyceride level. It can also help raise your HDL, so that good cholesterol level that we want. Physical activity. So not being physically active is a risk factor for heart disease. So regular physical activity can help lower that bad cholesterol, LDL, and raise our good cholesterol, the HDL. It also helps you lose weight. So essentially we want you to be try to be physically active for 30 minutes on most, if not all days. Smoking. So cigarettes actually lower your HDL cholesterol, and that HDL, like we talked about, helps to remove our LDL from your, from your body. So a lower HDL can actually contribute to a higher level of our LDL. Now there are some things that are non-modifiable risk factors that we can't control. So age and sex, so as women and men get older, typically their cholesterol levels rise. Before the age of menopause, women have lower total cholesterol levels than men of the same age. After that age of menopause, women's LDL cholesterol tends to rise. So hereditary, your genes do determine how much cholesterol your body makes. So it's very likely that high, blo high blood cholesterol can run in families and your race can affect it. So certain races may have an increased risk of high blood cholesterol. For example, African Americans typically have higher HDL and LDL cholesterol compared to um, white people. How can I lower my cholesterol? Our first line option is typically our lifestyle modifications that actually can do us a lot of good and second line being med medications. So that first line is having a heart healthy diet. So lowering the amount of saturated and trans saturated fats that you eat and even following certain diet plans such as the DASH diet 
or even the Mediterranean diet can be beneficial. Weight loss, as we previously talked about, is that losing weight can help lower your LDL or that bad cholesterol. Physical activity, again, like we previously mentioned, should, everyone should try to get regular physical activity, which is about 30 minutes per day, um, but can be modified for all patients based on what other things that are going on. Managing stress. So research has shown that chronic stress can sometimes raise your LDL cholesterol and lower your HDL cholesterol. Quitting smoking can raise your HDL cholesterol. Since HDL, again, helps remove that LDL cholesterol from your arteries, having more HDL can help lower that LDL. And like I said, if lifestyle changes alone do not lower your cholesterol enough, we may also add on medications. There are several types of medications that you will see, so we will make sure to dive through on those. And like I said, all these medications that we have. So first up are our HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, also known as your statins, fibrates, bile acid, sequestrants, niacin, fish oil, RPCSK9 inhibitors, and cholesterol absorption inhibitors. First and foremost are our statins. They have the largest and most proof to be beneficial for your health. So we typically lean on these to be our first line options if we are looking at medications. So how can statins help me? They reduce major related heart events. They decrease the liver production of your cholesterol specifically the bad LDL, and have benefits on arteries in the heart because they help stabilize any plaque buildup that is happening, as well as decreasing inflammation within your vessels. Now, there are different statins available, and it depends on what kind of statin intensity you may need based on your levels. So we have our high, moderate, and low intensity statins. Now, the high is typically the will reduce, if taken daily, your LDL by over 50%, so quite a significant amount. The two that make up this class are atorvastatin and rosuvastatin. Now these two are kind of our super statins of the group because they can be taken any time during the day. So if you want to take it in the morning with your morning meds, that is perfectly fine compared to some of the others which we will talk about. The moderate intensity statins, our daily dose, it will lower your LDL by 30 to 50 percent. Now, atorvastatin and rosuvastatin are in this, but again, it's that, those lower doses that you'll see, as well as simvastatin, pravastatin, lovastatin, fluvastatin, the extended release, and the immediate release, as well as pitavastatin. Our low intensity statins, again, mainly just based on the doses, your daily dose is going to be lowered. You lower your LDL by less than 30%. That's simvastatin, pravastatin, lovastatin, fluvastatin, and again, pitavastatin. So with regards to the rest of the statins that are listed here, Essentially, your body makes cholesterol overnight, so that is why we recommend that you take these before bedtime. Whereas, like I said earlier, the atorvastatin and rosuvastatin you can take at any time of the day because of how long it lasts in your system. We will get into details about your potential muscle pain in a minute, but if that does happen, it may be worthwhile to talk to your doctor about Pitavastatin, because that is the statin that is the least likely to cause those cause those muscle pain. Now, 
Knowing that we have all these different statins, they do have some side effects, so let's talk about those. Muscle pain and damage is one of the most common complaints of my patients that they have when taking a statin is specifically muscle pain. And it may feel like soreness, tiredness, or weakness in the muscles, specifically your thigh region. The pain can be very mild, just discomfort, or it can be severe enough to make your daily activities difficult. If it does make your daily activities difficult, this is something to alert your provider on. And again, that daily activities, if you kind of wake up with having your legs feel like you ran a marathon when you didn't, that is one of those things that we definitely want to know as a provider. Liver damage, occasionally statin use could cause an increase in the level of enzymes that cause liver inflammation. If the increase is mild, patients um, typically will continue on the drug, whereas rarely if there is a severe increase, then that may be something that needs to change with your dosing regimen or even trying a different statin. Again, this is going to be monitored by your providers when they are getting a lipid panel to overall check your how your medications and maybe diet exercise are working for you. They can also check your liver enzymes and liver function as well. Increased blood sugar or type 2 diabetes. It's possible your blood sugar level may increase when you take a statin, which may lead to developing type 2 diabetes. The risk is small, but important enough that the FDA or Food Drug Administration has issued a warning on statin levels regarding blood glucose levels and the risk for diabetes. Neurologic side effects. The FDA does warn on statin labels that some people have developed memory loss or confusion while taking statins. These side effects reverse once you stop taking the medication and there is limited evidence to prove a cause effect relationship but again something to talk about your doctor if you are experiencing memory loss or confusion while taking statins who's at risk of developing these side effects so if a patient is taking multiple medications to help lower their cholesterol there is a risk being female Having a smaller body frame, age over the age 80 or older, having kidney or liver disease, drinking too much alcohol. This interaction mainly is based on a long period of time and alcohol is broken down by your liver as are our statin medications. Hypothyroidism neuromuscular disorders including ALS and this is primarily because those neuromuscular disorders are also breaking down your muscle tissue so that pain that you may be experiencing could be a combination of having ALS and being on a statin. How to relieve these statin side effects? Now there are a couple different things that we can do so you can actually take a drug holiday or a brief break from statin theory. It's hard to tell whether the muscle aches or other problems you are having are statin side effects or just part of the aging process. So taking a break can help you determine whether your aches and pains are due to the statin itself or something else. Switch, switching to another statin, it's possible, although unlikely, that one particular statin may cause side effects for you while another statin won't. It's thought that simvastatin may be more likely to cause our muscle pain as a side effect than other statins when ta it's taken at high, higher doses. Changing your dose. So lowering your dose may reduce some of your side effects, but it also may reduce that benefit that we're going to get for your cholesterol levels. Another option is to take the medication every other day, especially if you take a statin that stays in the blood for 
multiple days. And specifically, resuvastatin is one of those. Talk to your doctor to see if that's an appropriate option for you. Take it easy when exercise. So if you all of a sudden want to go train for a, a marathon, unaccustomed ex exercise that your body's not used to may increase that risk of muscle injury. And it's best to make changes in your exercise routine over time. Exercise does cause muscle pain too. So it's sometimes to know, difficult to know if the pain comes from the statin or the exercise in someone who just started a new program. There other, are other cholesterol lowering medications, although our statins are most effective, you will see that the other, there are other medications available. And trying coenzyme Q10 supplements. So they help prevent statin side effects in some people, though more studies are needed to determine any benefits of talking, taking it, talking to your doctor first to make sure the supplement won't interact with any of your medications could be something that you may, may be beneficial. Interactions. So there are some interactions to take note of whether it's drug or food related, specifically the food related is mainly grapefruit juice. So there is an interaction with patients who are taking atorvastatin, simvastatin, and lovastatin. So grapefruit juice is actually broken down by again your liver, as are these medications. So it is more likely with this interaction that you would have more of the drug in your system, so more atorvastatin, more simvastatin, and lovastatin, causing you to have that increased level and that increased risk of having those muscle pains. And the drugs that also can interact, amiodarone, um, which is typically given if you have a irregular heart rate, gemfibrozole, which is another cholesterol medication. Some HIV medications, again, this has to do with how they are broken down, and some antibiotics and antifungal medications, sp specifically like clarithromycin or itraconazole, that can be used to treat certain infections. And some in immunosuppressant medications, such as cyclosporin, can cause interactions as well. So just be cautious when taking a new medication and making sure to talk to the pharmacist or your provider about any drug interactions that you should be worried about. Now on to the other medications that are not statins. So we will deep dive into the fibrates, bile acid sequestrants, fish oil, niacin, our PCSK9 inhibitors, and cholesterol absorption inhibitors. First up is our cholesterol absorption inhibitor. There is only one drug in this class, which is ezetimibe, is, is or the brand name is Zetia. It is typically indicated for initial therapy or add-on therapy to patients who already are on a statin. And it works by blocking the absorption of dietary cholesterol. So the cholesterol that you are intaking being those trans fats and saturated fats. Side effects, it's honestly really well tolerated. So none are really to be concerned about. Drug interactions is cholestyramine, which we will talk about. Again, this has to do with how it's being absorbed. Our fish oil, so EPA, DHA, there are a couple different brands available. So this is available over the counter. Um, it has, there are three prescription options, the Lovaza, Vasipa, and Epinova. Again, this mainly has to do with working to help lower our triglycerides, having an anti-inflammatory effect and heart protection. Now this is needed in quite higher doses for our cholesterol 
compared to if you're just having heart health. Now, there are some side effects with having a, sh a fishy burp or GI complaints, which are kind of having diarrhea, loose stools, upset stomach. If you are having that fishy burp, um, it is recommended that you, depending on the medication that you're taking, you could actually put it in the freezer um, to store it in there so that will actually lower and take it right from the freezer then that will lower your risk of having that fishy burp. Our bile acid sequestrant. So this is our colcivellum, our cholestyramine, and cholestopol. They work by binding bile acid in the gut, resulting in increased bile acid formation from cholesterol, essentially getting rid of that cholesterol so it never actually gets to your bloodstream. Side effects being that poor taste in GI complaints and the GI complaints can be anywhere from constipation to having diarrhea, gas, or even heart burn. Um, again, that poor taste comes into cholestyramine is actually a packet that you have to mix with water and it's an orange color. So I'm assuming an orange flavor, but again, it may have a poor taste. The main drug interactions are just due to how they are absorbed with other medications. And the main thing is that you want to dose them apart. So if you're taking, let's say, a multivitamin or even a omeprazole for your stomach, then you would want to dose these apart by about two to four hours because this will essentially bind to the drug and make it inactive. Our fibrates. So we have gemfibrozole, phenofibrate, and phenofibric acid. They work by decreasing liver triglyceride production. So these are going to be the main ones that will work on our triglycerides, but overall they do help with your lipid profile. Some side effects, again, GI, upset, gallstones, and muscle pain. They do interact with both statins and warfarin, so something to consider. The statins, they will increase your the level of statins in your blood as well as the amount of warfarin that you are exposed to. Next up is niacin. So it comes in different formulations. So it has an immediate release formulation, sustained release formulation, and an extended release formulation. It works by um, essentially reducing the precursors. So the one, the step before we make LDL, and it does need to be titrated slowly due to its side effects, specifically flushing but it can have itching or headache. So this flushing is typically, you know, a side effect being that it's on noticeable on your face as if you were blushing and embarrassed. Um, it's kind of that bright red flushing that you're looking for. Again, this does interact with our statins and fibrates just because of how the these drugs are broken down. So something to keep in mind that we need to adjust from taking them. Our PCSK9 inhibitors, specifically Praluent and Repatha, they bind to the LDL receptor to promote breakdown. So what does this mean? they are actually causing their receptor in our body to be more active and break down our LDL. So you get to kind of rev up that engine, if you will, to breaking down the LDL, that bad cholesterol, and get rid of it. Typically, this is used in gene mutations, so family mutations causing severely elevated cholesterol. This is not something that is gonna be used right away your statins, like I said, are going to be used right away, but it could be beneficial for those that are have gene mutations or if they're having resistance to having their cholesterol be low, lower. 
side effects. So these two medications are actually injectable medications. So the main thing that is noted with them is that they have an injection site reaction to be monitoring. So in summary, that is all of our medications that we can use to help lower our cholesterol. But again, remember that lifestyle modifications are first line things that we want to reach for. Diet, exercise, stop smoking are things that we're going to want to utilize first. Next up, then we would lean on our medications, specifically our statins, because they are the workhorse course of cholesterol lowering medications that we lean to and can do the best for us. All right, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My email is listed there. I would be happy to answer any questions that you guys may have. Thank you for tuning in.